Do you want to learn how to paint this cabinet twilight on a cold winter's night? In this video you will learn a simple way to oil paint. Not as hard as you think. I have put this in a how to paint book form. Easy to follow step by step. I will be your private teacher standing behind you while you create this beautiful work. I'll give instructions to make it very simple. I suggest you watch the entire video and then go back to each step stopping the video to paint that section. Well, let's get started. Welcome to the Sunday Painter. Please click and subscribe, hit the like button and don't forget the little bell so you will be the first when we have an inspirational idea. Leave a happy creative comment. In this step I want you to have a 11 by 14 inch canvas. Check out my video on cheap oil painting supplies to know what to get for this course. On your new canvas take 120 grit sandpaper and sand the gesso down to knock the roughness from the surface of the canvas. Don't over sand, just enough that it feels smooth when you run your hand over the front. What we are looking for is general placement of shapes and forms. Keep it simple, you don't have to draw in every detail. Enough for placement. Start by taking burnt umber and adding a lot of medium to thin it to a wash. With this mixture draw a simple outline starting with big shapes first. If you do this you will see where the little shapes go. Don't worry if the line overlap, the oil paint will cover this up anyway. Study placement on the canvas. Choose a starting point in the middle and work your way around the canvas. When you have your thin drawing down, it's ready for color. In step 2 we are just blocking in color. I use a Prussian blue with white added. Always start with your base color such as blue and add white until desired color is achieved. You need to add some medium to make the paint flow. It does not have to be very thick, you are just adding color to cover the white of the canvas. You don't have to keep the color constant. As you see I just scrubbed in different shades of blue. This is your underpainting at this first sitting. Your next few sittings will cover most of this up. What I tell my students is that you are building a painting. This is just the foundation not the painting. Most of my new students try to paint everything in on the first sitting and I have them do a blurry representation of the finished work. This will become more evident as you paint. So keep it very soft. In step 3 we are still covering the white of the canvas. Keep it thin and soft. I add some alizarin or a purple red to the Prussian blue and white to add a different tone to the work. I also started adding light and darks just start bringing the shapes. At this starting stage you use light and darks to start giving a roundness to the work. Remember this is still the first sitting. Step 4, this is the end of the first sitting. If you come out with a cotton candy feel you are on the right track. I want you to open a second window on your computer so you can bring up the painting at the beginning of the video for reference for the second sitting. In this step you can see the blurry trees and cabin with the road coming your way. You want your painting to completely dry to start on the next step of adding simple details. In step 5 we are going to add simple detail and bring the underpainting into more of a focus. As you see I've started on the hill adding a little detail to the trees and cabin. I added a little bit of sap green to give the painting some color. Keep your color simple and your work will stay in harmony. Remember to keep the detail simple getting your darks darker and your lights lighter. Note, oil paintings that are done this way are transparent. Which means you can see through the layers. It's best to think of it like putting a thin sheet of paper over another. If you look hard enough you can see the writing on the page below. This is why you don't want to cover your work with heavy paint. Also the heavier the paint the longer it will take to dry. I'm looking for thin layers. In step 6 I've add darker darks but still in the soft phase. The cabin and trees have more form. Look at the snow, still feels like cotton candy. Work on your painting until it looks something like this. If it doesn't that is just fine. Keep progressing forward. Study the original and where you are in your work then just keep adding soft details. In step 7, I worked on adding paint to the sky and the snow. You want your oils to be juicy. What I mean is add a lot more paint. The paint will be thicker than you have been working with. It will cover and blend better. It's hard to show what I'm talking about over the video, but you want to have more covering power but not so much it feels like you're dragging a dry brush over the canvas, but not so thin it may run down the front. 
experiment with different paint thicknesses. I tell my students if this fails that is okay, just get another canvas and start over. Each time you will be better and it will come easier. I've had many failures over the past 45 years of painting, and still have them from time to time. I just move on. In step 8, I need you to study the work. As artists we need to look beyond the surface to see what is really there. I want you to take a good look at the lights and dark transitions. The second thing I need you to look at is that I put strokes down and did not blend them or soften the edges. Here is a rule of painting. A dark color will draw the eye, and a hard line will do the same. As a painter you are a visual storyteller. Here is an example, when you see a leaf in your hand you can see the veins. If you take the same leaf out 100 feet all you will see is a blurry shape. Look at the painting as if you are standing in the work. What is close to your feet has greater detail than the cabin down the road. You know it's a cabin by the shape, and you can see a light coming out of the window. What you can't see is the shingles on the roof and the framing of the window or details of the individual leaf on the bushes beside the cabin. So far off is softer and less detailed than where you stand in the picture. It's time to study the original work to see what is there and what isn't. In step 9, I started to add details such as the moon and smoke to the cabin. Little soft dabs of bluish green snow to the trees. Here is another rule. White reflects what is around. So the snow on the leaves are a greenish blue white. If you was to paint snow white at this time of day it would jump off the canvas and look unnatural. If you stand back 10 feet and something jumps off the canvas it's too bright or the wrong color. Notice the snow is not blended in a solid mass of blue white. As an artist you can add texture to your work which creates more interest. This interest will make a better work not a boring one. Keep building the work. As it progresses you can add fine detail. Rule. When you start a work, find all the big shapes and then add fine details as you go. It will keep your work in harmony and you will paint faster with confidence. The harmony color is cool blue greens. Harmony in this work is blue. If you was to put in a warm color, say orange or red, it would be too bright. If you step back from the screen and squint all you would see is a blurry blue square. The painting is in harmony. In step 10, I added more paint to the snow and sky. Define the road where it looks more traveled. At this point I'm only looking at details to the work. Just keep adding. In step 11 the finishing of the work I've added trees and the details that brings the painting together. To paint the trees I let the painting dry which this would be the third sitting. I thin down the paint to draw the trees and find details in. Add a few leaves that did not fall off will make a better painting than a bare tree. I ask starter students to paint their first few works a couple of times. They get frustrated that their work doesn't look like the one at the beginning of the video. Also if you are happy with the work and you paint it a few more times the first work will not be as good as the third one. All the great artists have made copies of their best or most popular paintings. This is just a practice painting to get your hand and eye to create something special and unique later down the road. If you have any question please leave a comment. Just have fun, it's just one work in many to come.